Hey, welcome to another edition of the Spider's Web, live from the Bucks Room. I'm Spider. Thank you very much for tuning in on YouTube and Facebook. We got a lot of things to get into. I'm going to recap the Bucks game. The debacle in Dallas is what I call it, 16 to 10. No offense at all. No hope for any offense in this game. And I'm also going to do my new segment called The Spider's Fire. And if you've been paying attention, ladies and gentlemen, to my Facebook post, you'll know exactly what this is all about. Replacement refs. They gotta go. Again, thank you very much for tuning in to the Spiders Web live from the Bucks Room. I'm Spider. And if I didn't thank this person, and we never thank the people that are unknown. We never thank the people that really make our show. But if I didn't have this person holding the camera, every Spiders Web, listen to me, ran on and on about sports. She probably thinks I'm speaking Spanish by the time I get done. My sister Chrissy, she actually holds the camera still. She does a very great job. And I would tell you to reach out to her and leave you some comments, leave her some comments, if you will. But she has not stepped into the 21st century yet, so she does not have a Facebook account. So if you would, leave some comments if you want and tell her thank you. If not, again, I just wanted to make sure that I thanked her. And another person I wanted to thank was Trunks Tomorrow. He's one of my friends. He actually hooked me up with this jersey. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this jersey at this point... There's two reasons. First, I get tired of a shirt and tie all the time. Listen, I understand that I'm supposed to be professional and I try to be as professional as I can. But sometimes, you just like to be a little bit loose. So, that's what I'm going to do. And second, I want to remind Buccaneer fans that Vincent Jackson is still on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, <laughs> one catch for 29 yards. The $55 million man is still on this team. And from the looks of it on Sunday, you wouldn't even realize it because I, again, had one catch and it was late in the fourth quarter. So I just want to remind everybody that, yes, we still do have Vincent Jackson on our team. So let's get to it. The debacle in Dallas. The Buccaneers lose 16-10. to And all I can say is, ugh, what in the hell was that offensively this was horrible defensively let me tell you something folks the defense has definitely stepped up I thought this was going to be one of the weaknesses on this team this year and they've been a pleasant surprise Gerald McCoy has played out of his mind he is a man among boys and as long as he stays healthy I think this defense will be in pretty good shape unfortunately they lose Adrian Claiborne in the game so that had to be definitely a sore spot for Buccaneer fans because uh, Claiborne last year was awesome. He's probably the best defensive lineman on this team last year. And I don't think you can replace the Adrian Claiborne. So we'll see how that works out. But as far as the defense goes, I thought the defense did everything they could in this game to stop Tony Romo and this high-powered Cowboy offense. They gave up some big plays, 283 yards to Tony Romo. But all in all, this defense played their asses off. Now, offensively, again, it was horrible. Let me tell you some stats here. Josh Friedman, 10 for 28, 110 yards, one interception. This is not going to get it done. If this guy is your franchise quarterback, then he better start acting like a franchise quarterback. And these statistics are ridiculous. Now, some of these throws in this game... We're not even close. And this is one of the things that I told you folks that I had a that I was I was worried about. What Josh Friedman were we gonna get this year? Was it gonna be the Josh Friedman of 2010, the guy that had 25 touchdowns and six interceptions? Or was it gonna be the guy from last year that had 16 touchdowns and 26 interceptions? The Carolina game, he was alright. He was efficient. The Giant game, he was very good. And, you know, the Giant defense is a good defense. Their cornerbacks, eh, a little bit shaky, but he was very good in that game. This game, I don't know what happened. It was awful. The throws weren't there, but there were some reasons. It wasn't just Josh Freeman. Okay, and work with me here. I'm not jumping off the bandwagon. And I, I would suggest people that are ready to give up on a 24-year-old quarterback, a 24-year-old young quarterback think twice about this think about this for a minute it is his fourth year in the league but he's already had three offensive coordinators 
that's not a good thing guys it's not okay so it may take him some time to work into this new offensive system with Mike Sullivan now speaking of Mike Sullivan what in the world was all that play calling about running on first down running on first and second down I understand the game plan you want to get manageable third downs you want third and seven third and five third and two to make it easier on your quarterback but you look at the statistics here Doug Martin 19 for 53 very impressive rookie but in this game not so much 2.8 yards a carry it's not going to get it done listen I understand that you have a commitment to be a smash mouth football team but also the other team on the other side Dallas which by the way is a very very good defense and I'll give them credit those two cornerbacks that they got Brandon Marr and Morris Claiborne or everything is advertised but that defense knows what you're putting out there they know that you're gonna call a run first and second down so why not change it up do you have faith in Josh Freeman I'm not so sure if you do or not and this is the issue here is Josh Freeman the guy for this team because it's not this coach's quarterback it's not this offensive coordinators quarterback so they may not have confidence in him and it seemed like they showed that on Sunday if this guy's your franchise quarterback let him throw the ball let him change the plays there were some things coming out this week that he's not able to have audibles at the line of scrimmage now I don't know that for a fact this is just some reports that have come out but you would think on Sunday the way he played it, I don't know what to say at this point he can't get away with this you can't have an offensive coordinator calling a run first and second down you know a defensive coordinator is going to catch on to this game plan so you have to change it up a little bit now another thing that has to happen when the Dallas defenders as good as they are cornerbacks when they're playing bump and run coverage and they're giving these wide receivers single coverage these wide receivers have to have to win their matchups they have to get open and you know the public and, and everybody else won't see that they won't see the camera angles but you could see some of it on Sunday that these Dallas cornerbacks were being physical with these wide receivers Mike Williams Vince Jackson Tyquan Underwood whoever else maybe the fact that you cut Preston Parker on this team this week picked up Tyquan Underwood picked up Jordan Shipley maybe it foreshadowed the fact that you really don't have any wide receivers on this team besides Mike Williams and Vince Jackson but these guys if if this franchise quarterback and this offense is gonna go these wide receivers have to work harder because these cornerbacks are gonna be physical especially with these replacement refs in the league because they're gonna get away with murder they think they can take advantage of this situation so they're going to be extra physical with these wide receivers. So these wide receivers have to win their matchups and get open for this quarterback. Overall, the offense had no, no direction at all. The only direction was two, three yards in a cloud of dust. That's about it. So overall, I'll never get back those three hours again that I actually watched this game. I mean, I think a high school football team or a college football team would have more design in their offense, more plays in their offense. So you tell me what you think. Do you think Josh Freeman is the answer at, at the quarterback? I think it's too early to tell. But again, if he keeps on playing like this, then I think there's going to be a serious problem. What about Mike Sullivan? Is his offense too conservative? Uh, does he have to call more plays? Do they have to, 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 to throw the ball more? I think they do. And what about the wide receivers? Do they have to get it? Obviously, they have to get open, but do you think we have the horses to run this offense? I'm not sure about that. But Vince Jackson, how can you be as an offensive coordinator in this league, not find a way to get a guy that is your top playmaker more passes in this game? Again, I understand the defense is very good. I get that. But you got to find a way to get this guy the ball. He's a $55 million man. Get him the damn ball. There's still the words of Keyshawn Johnson. Get him the ball. Figure out a way. If you can't figure out a way to get your top playmaker the ball, 
then I guarantee you're probably not sleeping very good at night. So, I, you know, to me, this whole offense is, yeah, I understand the whole makeup of it. They want to be a smash mouth football team. But if it's not working, it's not working. If it's not working with Doug Martin, put in LeGarrette Blunt. See if he can run a little bit. Uh, and I would like to see this guy, by the way, besides hurtling tacklers, run over somebody, please. 245 pounds, 250, yard, 250 pounds, and you're trying to hurdle somebody. Run north and south over somebody. I, I think you got to get this guy more involved in the offense. How about Dallas Clark? Where has he been on this offense? Nowhere. I mean, these are the guys that you got to help Josh Freeman out. So it's not all Josh Freeman's fault. And again, I'm going to warn you, he's 24 years old, so he's going to make some mistakes. But this offense has to get better for this team to have a chance to win some games this year. Now, what I take out of these three games is, as a Buccaneer fan, you have to be pretty excited. Yes, you lost to the Giants, but you had a chance to win that game. Your defense did everything they could to win that game for you. They caused all kinds of turnovers, but they couldn't get a stop. Eli Manning did it to you, so... But, again, you had a chance to win that game. Last year, I don't think anybody thought they had a chance to win any games at all because this team quit. In the, the Dallas Cowboy game, you had your opportunities to win this game, but it didn't work out. So what I would say to a Buccaneer fan right now is you have to be pretty excited that the fact that this team is going to be competitive this year and this team has given the Giants and the Cowboys everything they can handle. Remember, they beat Carolina, and Carolina was supposedly – supposed to be a team on the rise and still could be. They're having their own problems, but it could always be worse, Buccaneer fans. You could be 0-3 like the New Orleans Saints. So you tell me what you think about that. Now, let's get to it. The Spider Fire for the week. And I got to tell you, when I heard about the replacement referees being on this, uh, you know, being a part of this whole NFL thing, I, I had to say I had my doubts. But now I have to clearly say that this is the most disgusting situation in the NFL today. Okay? They have to get this corrected. And like I said before, defensive players are taking advantage of the rules. They are. The umpires, the referees are over their heads. I said umpires because it's baseball. Baseball season in my head. The referees are over their head. The debacle on Monday Night Football a couple weeks ago with the Atlanta Falcons and the Denver Broncos was ridiculous. I think the first quarter took an hour alone. It's not acceptable. You have to put you have to have professional people in place, okay? These guys, like John Gruden said on the broadcast, are six round picks. They can't handle the situation. You don't put a six round football player in the position and think he's going to excel because he's not going to. The referees are totally over their head. The coaches don't respect them. The players don't respect them. And guess what? Safety in the NFL right now has taken a hit. And let me give you an example of this. Darius Haywood Bay with the Raiders gets a, a, a terrible shot, a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot, which, by the way, the guy got fined for, but there were no flags on the play. Do you think this kind of thing would happen with regular referees? No, it would not happen with the regular referees because the players respect the rules and respect these refs. And I get it. I understand what this is all about. It's a lockout, okay? It, it's, it, you know, both sides are looking for money. One's trying to get it and one's trying not to give it. These referees make $78,000 a year, but guess what? After three weeks of replacement referees running in the NFL, I got to say, they probably deserve it and probably deserve more. So in the words of Susan Powder, stop the insanity, NFL. Get these guys in the fold so they can get this game under control. Because if not, you're going to have an incident like you had on Monday Night Football where clearly you could see that that guy on the Green Bay Packers the defender made the interception, came down with it, and yet there was one ref that came in and said it was incomplete. The other one overruled him, called it a touchdown, and gave the game to the Seattle Seahawks. And by the way, I know it went to review, and that guy wasn't a replacement, 
but consequently, he probably should be replaced because he missed that call. Unbelievable. I feel sorry for Packer fans. I hope this lights a fire under the Packers, and I hope they come through. But you can't have this kind of thing happen in the NFL. You can't have refs give games to the other team. I understand it was a full game. I understand the Packers put themselves in that position. But it can't come down to the refs. The refs are like children at Thanksgiving. They should be seen and not heard. And that's the point again. NFL, do your job. Roger Goodell, do your job. If you truly care about the safety of the game and you want to protect the shield, not only have professional coaches, not only have professional owners, but get the damn referees back in the fold so this chaos can end. Well, this is another Spider's Web. I'm Spider, live from the Bucks room. Definitely tune in. We're going to have more shows on tap. We're going to have fans come on, talk about their favorite team still. They're going to give us the analysis of their team. I'm going to try to get a Packer fan on here and let him vent to me and tell me how he feels about the replacement referees. This has been the Spider's Web. I'm Spider. Same Spider time. Same Spider channel.